Hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to paint better backgrounds. I know a lot of people don't like adding backgrounds to their work. I was one of those people. I could paint my subjects pretty well, but I didn't know how to approach painting those backgrounds. I wasn't comfortable doing it, and I found it a little bit overwhelming. I've been on a little bit of a journey of improvement myself over the last few months, trying to improve my backgrounds and give my subjects a little bit more space to live in. So I'm going to show you how I approach my backgrounds now, and hopefully you'll pick up a few tips to help you with painting better backgrounds. So you might have already seen last week's video where I started the process of painting this snow leopard. If you haven't seen that yet, go and check it out at the end of this video. I started with a really simple blocking of the subject and the background. It's really important that you plan out your subject and your background together. You don't want to paint your subject on a blank canvas and then fill in the background later. So like I've done here, for the background and the subject, I split them up into basic shapes. I had the colour for the snow leopard, I had the colour for rocks and the colour for snow. I got the simple shapes down first. I then did a few layers on the subject, the snow leopard. I had an idea about the mood and the setting that I wanted the subject to be in, so I felt like I could quite happily start to refine that subject a little bit more. Now, even though I'm painting the snow leopard and it's quite refined, this isn't the final layer of the snow leopard, it's just sort of midway through. There's going to be more to do on the snow leopard as we progress through the stages of the background. Once I've got that idea of the background in my head and I've refined the subject a little bit more, I can start to move on to some of the details. I start with the furthest point of the background first. I try to keep it simple and just work with three colours. A dark, a mid-value and a light. You want to try and get a sense of distance or a sense of depth with pictures like this. So the further that that background is from the subject, the softer, more out of focus, the blurrier the background should be. It's really important that you take as much care with the background as you do with the subject. Because it's equally as important for the finished piece. The background informs the lighting and the mood of the piece, and it provides a setting, it provides an environment for the subject to interact with. The background helps inform the narrative of the painting. It makes it more interesting, and it helps you as the painter tell a story. Not just the story behind the painting, but the story within the painting as well. And if I'm being very honest, more often than not, it is the story behind and within the painting that sells. That's what people find interesting. My process involves a lot of back and forth between painting the background and the subject. I never completely finish one before the other until like the very end of the painting. Both parts get painted at the same time with equal emphasis on the importance of each. They are both slowly built up around each other until eventually you get a united subject and background that form the finished painting. They need to be able to tie together and tell the same story. Painting one to completion before the other can sometimes make the painting look a little bit disjointed. Sometimes it makes one of them look stuck on top of the other. They don't flow very well and the painting just doesn't quite sit right. Even the foreground, the parts that are in front of the subject, need to be painted in this united way. They need to be slightly more detailed than the background, but they do not need to be anywhere near as detailed as the subject itself. For the snow, I started with these big, large, flat shapes. Again, I'm only using a dark, a mid-tone and a light. It's simple block shapes. I don't want to be adding loads of tiny details or textures to this foreground. I just want these big, bold shapes distinguished by whether they are areas of light 
or areas of shadow. Once I've got those basic shapes in, once I've got the general idea of that foreground in, I can then start to add a few darker areas and a few highlights with a small brush. I don't need to go overboard with this, just in a few areas, just to emphasize those shadows and those lights slightly. The background and the foreground should have depth, but they shouldn't overwhelm the viewer. They shouldn't distract the viewer from the main subject of the painting, which in this case for me is the snow leopard. The background should be there not to detract, but to emphasize and enhance the story that that painting is trying to tell. So my best tips for painting better backgrounds are to start with that background. Even if it is just a very, very quick wash, just an idea of what that background is going to look like. It gives a sense of mood, it gives a sense of the environment of that piece, and just gives you something to work with later on. Start with the biggest shapes first. Forget about details, you don't need them, you don't need them really at all, but you can put them in later on after you've got those big block shapes in. And then remember, you do not need to go into as much detail as the subject. Try to simplify some of those areas of the background. Make them a little bit more soft. Make them out of focus. Create that depth, that dimension, and make that background a more captivating setting for the subject. So yeah, as I said, I just wanted to create this quick little video for you describing some of my process and my tips for painting backgrounds. I did actually change the background of my Snow Leopard painting after I'd finished filming. So that sort of brings us on to one final really, really important tip. Don't be afraid to make big changes even in the final stages of the painting process. You've got to get over that big fear. I mean, I was scared of it. I am still scared of editing a piece later in the process, but you've got to get over that fear and make those changes. You've just got to do it. It might not seem it, but paint is very forgiving. You can just paint over something that's wrong. You can just remove it and restart it. And I promise you, even though it might take a little bit longer, you will be much happier and more proud of the final result if you've spent the time to change it, to get it looking right, rather than just leaving it and thinking, oh, that'll do. Hopefully these tips that I've shared will help you to paint better backgrounds. And if you've enjoyed the video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to see the first part of the process of painting the snow leopard, please check out this video here. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.